Hi, everybody. I'm Lori Veneer. I met several of you at lunch. A couple of you were brave enough to sit at the, the best Broadway musical table with me. Um, and then I, some of you might have just been in the energy room. I don't know. I was talking to a lot of people over there. Um, but I am, at the moment, still the chair of the Environmental Economics Program here at the Nichols School. And over here to my right, to your left, is Randy Kramer, who will be the chair of the Environmental Economics Program and has been many, many, many times before. Um, beginning July 1st. So for you guys, Randy will be the man. But in the meantime, I'm still the woman. So, okay. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the overall structure of the environmental economics and policy uh, concentration here at the Nicholas School. Um, and then, you know, take some time to uh, talk about the kinds of classes that we are expecting to offer next year when you would be here. Um, and answer any questions. And then we've got a variety of second year, first year students and one second year student who are here to answer any questions you might have from the student perspective. And at that point, Randy and I and any other faculty who managed to wander in will leave so they can tell you the real scoop on the place. Um, but let's start right now a little bit with the environmental economics and policy concentration. You should have all gotten in the back these wonderful salmon colored. Every year we get a different color. I kind of like this one. When you were gray, that was pretty boring. Yeah, gray was awful. All right. Um, historically, the environmental economics and policy concentration has had, uh, or track has had three different branches within it. All right. Starting next year, we're only going to have two. So when you look at the top and it says environmental policy analysis and environmental and resource economics, those are the two that are staying with us. The business and the environment has become its own concentration um, starting actually right now. We've got some, some students who transferred into it um, this year. Um, and so that's got its own set of requirements. So going forward, um, you'll basically be taking a set of core classes, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then deciding, you know, do I really want to focus on the policy analysis and law side, or do I want to focus more on the economic side, all right? Um, so what are these required courses that all of the EDP students take? Well, in the fall semester, assuming you've satisfied your prereqs, which I'll talk about in a little bit, you're going to start every Tuesday and Thursday morning with me. Um, from 10.05 to 11.20 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you will be taking environmental economics, which is EDP 520, and you'll get to have me for the first half of the semester. And then Marty Smith will come in, who's the world's leading fisheries economist, and teach you guys resource economics fish forests, um, diver biodiversity, all of that stuff in the second in the second half of that. So that's the ENT 520 and 521. It's got two, it's two different courses, but they're each only half a semester in length. Okay, so it's one semester's worth of economic um, that, you, that everybody is required to take. Um, then in the spring, people take EMB 577, which is the core environmental politics class. Next year, for you guys, it will be taught by Megan Mullen, who um, is a political scientist by training, focuses a lot on water policy. Um, and uh, everybody will take environmental law. I, I can't tell you at the moment if that will be in the fall or the spring. It's a little bit under discussion at the moment, but it's taught by Jonathan Wiener, who's, a, who's an environmental lawyer. He's a professor at the law school who has a secondary appointment here. That class is taught jointly with the law students. Okay, so this is a class where it's about 50% Nicholas School students and 50% law students. But don't freak out too badly. Jonathan isn't really like hardcore Socratic method, you know, cold call you. Um, and most students think it's really great to actually have an opportunity to really interact with the law students. They bring very different perspectives to these questions than the Nicholas School students do. Okay, so that class um, is also required that's a class that sometimes people put off to their second year um, rather than try to take all of these things in their first year. But Jeff is like making a face like we shouldn't do that. But he'll tell you all about that later. Um, uh, and then the other um, classes that are listed up here under required, there's a professional communications module um, and a writing of your master's project module. And then every semester you take a seminar class with the other EP students. Um, and in that seminar, it, doesn't meet, it meets on Fridays, but not every Friday. Like, we're meeting here in a, in a few minutes because they're doing dry runs of their master's project presentations. So they're all meeting right now pretty actively in the next few weeks as they get ready for that. 
Um, but there's large months go by where we don't meet on a Friday. But that time on Fridays is reserved for things like doing presentations and practice runs of your master's project or group advising for registration or things that sort of all EEP students, we just want to tell you all once or have you all together to, to do, okay? Um, you take that every semester and then you get one credit for the whole thing at the end, all right? And then, of course, you've got master's projects credits, and I know you all had a long um, presentation about master's projects earlier today, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, then um, there's a class that's required, but for some reason we don't list it as required, but it's the only thing that counts as group A tools. So if you skip down on your salmon sheet worksheet to tools, there says group A and there's one line under it, and then group B. So let's just jump down there for a minute. Group A tools is stats. Okay, I don't know how it came that we didn't just list that as required, but there's only one thing that counts for tools A, and it's stats. So you're all going to take what's E&B 710, which is uh, our stats class with Betsy Albright, who's fantastic. Like, if you hate stats, you will suddenly decide that you love stats because Betsy is so good. All right, so uh, most people, when they come in their EP and their fall of their first semester, are taking the two modules of econ, so that's one semester's class, the stats class. Many are also taking environmental law, and then there's usually a freebie, an elective that you're taking in that first semester. Okay, politics is Thomas Burke. So what might, what are the other things that you need to do that you could fill up those electives with? Um, you're going to take 12 credit hours, generally four classes, because most classes are three credits. Although there's, you could do it some other ways. There's some two credit, and one credit classes. Most people will take four classes, four three credit classes which we call major electives. So if you choose the econ concentration, right, those are going to be at least three upper level environment and resource economics classes, right? If you choose the policy track, those are going to be at least, there's going to be three at least uh, upper level policy or law classes, right? The fourth can be any social science class you want, all right? So even if you're doing econ, you've got to take three of those four as econ classes. The fourth one could be, I'm taking um, uh, climate law because I'm really interested in climate economics and I want the law class as well, right? So you've got four classes, that's why there's four lines there. Um, three of them sort of have to be in that, that major that you're declaring, right? Whether it's policy analysis or economics, and then the fourth one can be anything, right? Social science, not, you know, Business. Um, okay. Then, if we move down to the next slot, we've got our natural science classes. So, one of the things that's distinguishing about getting an EP um, degree here within our IBM program from, say, getting a public policy degree up the hill at the Sanford School or somewhere else is that you get the policy and the economics classes, but you also get some depth in environmental science. Right, so these are your environmental science classes that you're taking. You have to take nine credit hours of them, so that's usually three classes, three three-hour classes. And what we encourage people to do is really develop some depth in an area. Are you most interested in climate? Are you most interested in water, air, energy, whatever it is? Take three classes, and we have ones in each of those areas that start out assuming you know nothing about science. So if you were an undergrad English major and you find yourself here and you're like, okay, what am I? It's okay. There's a you know there's an entry level class in each of those sort of topical areas that have no prerequisites, um, and then build up from there, right? And actually develop some some topical expertise in an environmental science area, okay? And then the last thing is tools. We already talked about tools. Say that stats. All right, if you love stats, and you will, because Betsy's awesome, when you love stats, you're going to say, I'm going to take so much more stats, and that's fine. You can take two more. You can take as many stats as you like. But if you, even despite Betsy's awesomeness, go, that was fun, but I don't really need to do that ever again. There are other classes you can choose for tools, right? So tools could be more different types of quantitative classes besides stats, like modeling, right? But it can also be things like, uh, conflict resolution, negotiation, participatory techniques, right? We think of as the soft skills, but that are ne nevertheless very important in professional settings, right? So the tools classes is sort of what are the, the, the sets of skills that you want to have, right, to tell your employer these are the kinds of things I'm really well equipped to do. 
You can also take Randy Kramer's amazing social science surveys class and learn all the uh, pitfalls and joys of doing survey research. Um, so there are a variety of different types of choices there in that, right? So don't feel like that means, okay, I have stats one and then stats two and three, right? You've got a lot of flexibility on what goes in those other two. If you happen to be really interested in, in GIS, a geospatial analysis, you can do that certificate and be an EEP student. Those will be your other two tools classes and one of your natural science classes. Okay, so um, inevitably one of the GIS classes that people take in the certificate is either conservation GIS or water GIS, or we're talking about maybe having an energy GIS. That that class would then count as a natural science class, and your other, the intro to GIS, and your other GIS classes would be tools. So you could absolutely do that. You just have to kind of know you want to do it from the beginning because everything's got to fit in the right box. Um, the other certificates also work very nicely here. We have a lot of students who do the community-based environmental management certificate. That fits nicely. We have students who do, there's an international development certificate that is offered out of the Sanford School but is open to all graduate students. That fits nicely within EEP. Um, so there's, not, there's really nothing the entrepreneurship one work. And so there's there's pretty much no certificate that is offered to you that you can't do within this um, program.